Hey guys, what's going on? It's Rob here. First off, if you're new here, um, definitely hit the subscribe button as we always have fresh content coming out and you don't want to miss out. Um, so I took a trade about a week ago here, maybe a little more now. Um, I had a people message and ask me about it, why I took a short in a clearly bullish market. And I kind of want to show you guys what I was looking at and how the short came to be. So first off, we had this huge reaction here. Um, there's some stuff to the left that we hit. I believe it was a uh, daily imbalance and we took some more liquidity to the left. We also took this level. I was actually initially looking for this level to go and uh, it never fully happened. Um, it sort of did on uh, DXY, but not Euro. I'm going to show you guys all that in a second. But my initial target was to take out the previous day's low and then to take out all this build up on the four hour. Um, however, what ended up happening was a little bit different than that. And that's totally fine. Um, so first off, let's just kind of have a look at everything I was seeing um, or before we do that so we have this level of imbalance that stands out to me on the four hour I think there's a little sliver in there it's kind of hard to see just barely but it's there um, the next thing that stands out to me is we obviously took a daily low here and then if we look to the upside I have a few liquidities that I'm interested in. All right. So if we look at our session breaks um, we have a level of liquidity here that stands out to me. Um, we obviously have the four hour imbalance above. Um, we also have the Asia highs and then we have this level of liquidity here. So these are all kind of the levels that stand out to me. Um, there was a buy down here. A lot of our community members did catch it. I didn't take the buy because I was kind of looking at a higher time frame impulse. Um, it half worked out for me, half didn't. Again, I'll show you guys all this in a sec, what the thought process was. So I didn't pretty much take a trade till uh, the end of the session. Um, so basically I wait for my levels to get hit. So I wasn't interested in taking a trade until we took one of my liquidity levels. So here we could see a clear taking of our levels. At the same time, we hit our imbalance. And uh, now I just need something that gives me a signal to look for an entry. So let me just play this ahead. Whoops. All right, so we get our first bearish here. So I kind of fast forward this a bit too fast, but my first entry signal would have been to look for a um, bearish candle on the one minute above the 50% of this um, candle. So you guys already see what happened. Um, anyway, what I want to show you is uh, the entry signal I was looking for here. <laughs> So this 15 minute candle had just printed. So now we are waiting to come up above this 50% level. So again, just to reiterate this, um, I am looking for sell signals above this blue line. For the sake of this video, let's actually just make 50 blue. So it stands up. All right. Cool. So we're looking for any kind of uh, sell signals above this blue line. I'm not interested in anything below it. So here what, what ends up happening is we actually end up invalidating this POI. Um, we never came above the blue line. 
and it gets invalidated right here as you guys see so um for me to use this 15 minute candle as a poi um this high was not to be violated so i was to get a bearish candle in this level uh, without a violation of the high so here we clearly violated the high so we've induced the early sellers um so at this point we still have no trade um now i know you guys seen what happened on the 15 minute and i just wanted to show you the thought process as to why we didn't execute that so now um we're still in the waiting game we're in the right area we're interested in selling from here um I need more confluence to sell from here. So I'm still waiting for the next bearish candle to know there's still bearish pressure. So we get another bullish candle and we're still reaching higher. Um, we don't really have a lot of reach, but I don't really want to sit on the one minute trying to find top. So we're still looking for that um, bearish candle on the 15. So here we get it, um, same scenario as before. I want to be looking for a sell signal above this 50% line. And uh, just to show you guys, uh, one of the confluences I had to was actually the DXY. Where were we here? Ah, uh -huh, so right here. So the DXY itself, so you're actually looking right here i believe no let's flip this we'll just flip this chart for the sake of the whoops wrong chart i'm gonna flip this chart and just show you guys all right so if we look at friday here um this is the dxy chart inverted you can see the dxy um failed to take asia highs I'm gonna go one step further and I'm just gonna inverse the candle colors too so it's easier to compare to Euro. This is actually how I usually run my DXY chart. I'm not sure why it didn't stay like this. Anyway, um, now let's take a look at what we have. So if you were to compare this, um, DXY failed to make a higher high here. Whereas if you compare this to this chart, you can see the DXY made a higher high. So this is a DXY divergence. Um, so this is still telling me that, hey, um, DXY is failing to make this high. We're still looking for this sell. So if you look here, um, this all lines up so let's now go to our one minute and wait for an execution anywhere above the 50 percent line is pretty much fine again we do not want to invalidate this high so what 4.1 4.5 that's lots um if you're looking for a little more hours you can obviously look for a smaller stop so limit on that's fine. We get tapped in here. Um, so this is a this is a pretty good entry. Um, this is our first pullback. We balance this small one minute range. An alternative entry for me would be if we take out this inducement, which I believe we do here. And here is your level of inducement. Oh, maybe it didn't get taken out. Okay, well, our limit got tapped. It could have swore this level got induced, but maybe not. So anyway, we're in this trade now, and let's actually go back to discussing the targeting. Um, so obviously, this is a higher time frame play for me. I'm not interested in taking any profit off this until at least this low gets run so that's tp1 for me um tp2 here is this weekly low here and i'm going to show you guys what happened with that so i'll give you a little spoiler alert um i hit tp1 took a good chunk of my trade off there um i left a little bit on to go to tp2 um 
it doesn't fully do it and I'm going to show you guys what actually happens here. Whoops, I think we run that 4.4 mark. Anyway, uh, so this runs to TP, uh, TP1 on Monday here. I believe it was Monday or Tuesday. So uh, stops broken even, just leave it over the weekend. Again, higher time frame play, so it's going to take a bit to, to play out. So we stay in this um, here, still holding, still holding. Um, still haven't been paid from this trade. And here we finally hit TP. So it took, I believe, 50 or 60% off here, and I held the rest here. Now, um, I'm going to be honest with you guys, I had failed to look at the DXY at this point. So I was still actually waiting for this um, area at the bottom to get hit. Um, Euro doesn't actually do it. Euro actually reverses here. And I'm gonna show you guys exactly what happens. So this was the bottom um, from a supply and demand perspective. Uh, many of you are probably wondering why is a demand level that's been tapped so many times holding. Um, the truth is this whole sell to buy would probably be your daily. So your four hours here. So you've been tapped one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight times. And why did this level hold? Um, the truth is this level wasn't the reason um, it actually held. I will show you guys. So if we actually head over to the DXY, so this is Tuesday, May 2nd. Um, had I seen this on the DXY, I would have closed my position out. However, that day I did not look at the DXY. So if you guys remember at the beginning of the video, I said, this uh, build up on the higher time frame was my TP. Obviously, we pay ourselves up the first higher time frame target because it'd be silly not to. Um, again, so I told you guys that we were looking for that level to get run. So let's now go to the four hour. So this is actually the weekly low on the DXY that I was looking to run on Euro. So if you guys compare, you could see this is the weekly low on Euro that was my target. This is the DXY weekly uh, low. Same target. Um, you guys can clearly see we took this build up. So my failure on this trade was, you guys can see all the alarms I have set on uh, DXY. These are points of interest to me. Um, that's either telling me I need to be aware of what the DXY is doing, or I need to take partials or close my trade out. Um, I had failed to set an alarm at this level. Had I set an alarm on the DXY, it would have told me DXY had completed this target that we were looking for on Euro. Um, yeah, long story short, I let the rest of that position break even because I was convinced we're still running this um, We're still running this low and unfortunately that's not what happened So I ended up breaking even on the rest of that position, which was quite sad But luckily we took a big chunk off here. So we still did pretty good on it So that's kind of the lesson of this video guys pay attention to your DXY because sometimes it'll do stuff a lot sooner than euro and if it hit TP before Euro, you need to get out of that trade because more often than not, um, Euro is going to follow the DXY. And I wanna show you guys one other thing. So uh, I was telling you guys about this demand level that we hit and any supply and demand trader, like I don't really use supply and demand, like if it's there, that's great. It can be an extra confluence, but I don't use it for a point of interest so much. But um, as for why this level held, I'm gonna show you guys here exactly why it held. So this is as low as the DXY came down or as high as the DXY came down if we were uh, not inverse. So check out what the DXY actually hit. So the DXY had 
this inefficiency here, which is actually our point of interest. So everything else above here is efficient. Um, you have a gap here that didn't get hit. You have imbalance below here, but we have this small level of one hour inefficiency, which basically stopped the XY dead in its tracks. Um, now, while everyone thought it was some magical demand that held six times, um, that's not the case. Usually uh, levels of demand that have been hit that many times for those that trade supply and demand, um, they don't hold very often statistically. But here we have this interesting level, and then we have this gap, and then we would have this other imbalance level. So if we hit any of these levels, um, that's enough for a euro to reverse. Now, if you line up the exact timeline of one euro reversed, you have DXY took all of that buildup and basically took the weekly low. We took liquidity into a rebalance. So while my analysis was correct, I had totally forgot to set the alarm and I was waiting for that to get run. So that is a lesson for all you guys from one of my mistakes. Definitely pay attention to the DXY because it'll show you where Euro is going before it goes there. It's got more weight than Euro and Euro is, uh, it makes up 57% of the DXY. So uh, hopefully I didn't, uh, yeah bore you guys too much going into a little too much detail but yeah um if you haven't hit the subscribe button definitely do guys and i'll try to release at least one of these a week and keep some knowledge dropping for you guys anyway guys i will catch you on the next one